Parshat Vayetze. Actually, somebody mentioned to me today that actually this week we're beginning our third year. Now, we were in the third year, but we started, this is our third year of Parshat Vayetze, that we're saying Shiorim. Baruch Hashem, that we've made it this far, and we see how much everybody here in the Shir has grown in Ruchnius. Every year you pick up another, another, some more insight on the Parsha, a little more to learn, a little more to know. So, uh, third year right now. We know we've discussed the past couple of weeks that Yaakov Avinu was called, was called the Bechira Avais. Yaakov was uh, the chosen one of the Avais. He had, was a perfect combination of the Midas of Avram Avinu and Yitzhak Avinu. And we discussed a couple of different aspects of this over the last couple of weeks. But Yaakov Avinu was known as the Bechira Avais. So how do we define, how can we look at this, at the Mida, what, what exactly was it that Yaakov Avinu had? He had a number of things, but let's try to focus in on something uh, on, in the Midas of Yaakov Avinu, in a Mida of Yaakov Avinu, what made him the chosen one and something maybe even on a higher level than Avram Avinu and Yitzhak Avinu. Beginning of last week's Parsha, Parsha's told us when Yaakov and Esau were being born, so the Pasuk says that Esau was born, and then Yaakov, it says, V'yodoi oichezes ba'akev Esau. Yaakov's hand was holding on to the heel of Esau. V'yikro shema Yaakov. And his name was called, he called him Yaakov. So Rashi says over there, right there, at the beginning of Parsha told us, beginning of last week's Parsha, who called him Yaakov? HaKadosh Baruch Hu called him Yaakov. The first Pshat of Rashi, Rashi I think says, to shut them over there, first Pshat Rashi is that a Kodesh Baruch Hu called him Yaakov. So let me ask you a question. Yaakov Avinu was the Bechira Avais, the chosen one of the Avais. So you would think maybe that Yaakov's name represents something uh, momentous, something uh, world-changing event. What was Yaakov, where did he get his name from? For that one second, when he was coming out after Esau, he held on to Esau's heels. What's Pshat? That that's the name that... Yaakov Avinu carried his whole life something that happened for a second at his birth? Well, how could that be? So the Sivu Shalom says that it must be that that's, that's not that's not the other Yachezes doesn't just refer to that physical fleeting second where he held on to Esau's heel. The Sivu Shalom says that Yodo Yachezes Yodo Yachezes has a much deeper meaning. It's a remez to the ongoing spiritual struggle that Yaakov, the, the, the Koychus of Yaakov and the Koychus of the Yetzirah, which is represented by Esau, that that struggle which is going on from then and will go on through all of time. It's a much, uh, it's, it's a much bigger event than just that holding on for a second. Yodei Achezetz means that he was holding on, it was a battle. Yaakov Avinu was holding on to something, which we'll explain in a moment, but something Right at that moment, he had begun a war, a struggle with Esau that would last for generations and actually last forever. When the Yetzirah sees that he's unable to get a person, he tries to get a person to do an Avera. When the Yetzirah sees that he cannot get a person to do an uh, to the Iver, Isurim, what does he do? The Yetzirah begins to work on the Inyone Heter of a person. There are things that are actually not more, that are not Usr, Things we know, things are not usher. But even though it's mutter, it makes a very big difference on how you do it. And that's pshat in Kadesh Atzmacha the Mutterlach. We've spoken about it, and it's something which is extremely important. That's something, things that are mutter to do, not something that's usher. Things that are mutter, there are ways to go about things, and ways to do things, and uh, there are ways that you don't do things. So Yaakov Avinu, his midah, it says, V'yodoy Echezes Ba'akev Esau, a cave is Rashi Tevis of Kadesh Atzmacha B'Motar. He was holding on to the heel, but he was holding on to a cave. This was a struggle. The way Esau acts with things that are mutter, and the way Yaakov acts with things that are mutter in Hanois, and, 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 and having Hanoi al Mazan, the way you do things, that was something which Yaakov and Esau couldn't agree on from the first second, and they still don't agree on it. And there's a, we know that all these things, these Hanois and Taivas and all these things are ways that you separate yourself from, from, a, Kodesh, from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. 
And that's what the Kayach of Esav wants. That's what the Yetzirah wants. The Yetzirah wants you to be separate from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and Yaakov Avinu wants to bring you, bring you closer to Kodesh Baruch Hu. Yodo Yechezes, on the Oke, on the Kaddish Atmucha, Pumutelah. Yaakov Avinu wants that we should put Kedusha in everything that you do. So it wasn't just the, for that short moment. The name was not given for that moment at birth when Yaakov Avinu was holding onto his heel. The name was the focal point of the whole thing that Yaakov represents and Azov represents. And they were at war about that from the beginning until today, they're still at war with that. And that's how Yaakov got his name. Yaakov wanted every Maisha to be done with Kedusha. You do it for Kedusha, do it for the Torah. And Azov wanted everything the opposite. Azov wanted, even when something's mutter, even when something's mutter, Azov wanted that it should separate you from a Kurdish Baruch The Mepharshim say, in a few different places, that the Indian of Yaakov Avinu, what we learned from Yaakov Avinu is Taka, this Midas HaKadusha. And uh, the Sulsi Sharem says, when, when Sulsi Sharem talks about Midas HaKadusha, Per Chava, Sulsi Sharem tells us the difference between Tahara and Kedusha. What's Tahara? Tahara is the absence of Tuma and Ra. The absence of that. If you don't have Tuma, you don't have anything bad, so you're Tar. But Kedusha is something more. Kedusha is something tangible. Kedusha is something that you that you add on. In other words, the Mizbeach became Kaddish. The Mitzvah became Kaddish. What is what is Kedusha? I mean, Kedusha is something that once there's no Toma, so it's added on. The Mitzvah Shalom actually says that Kedusha, the, the actual thing of Kedusha is a Matanah in Hashemayim. It's a Matanah from Kaddish Baruch Hu. If you do what you're supposed to do, then Kaddish Baruch Hu gives you Kedusha the Matanah. Let's look at the whole parsha. I'll bring you a riot to what we were just saying and an unbelievable um, idea from this week's parsha to explain what we just said. Look at this week's parsha. Parsha Vayetze. What does it talk about? It talks about how, Kodesh, how uh, Yaakov Avinu did business with Lavan, right? For all these years, seven years, another seven years. And, that, he, I, and he, Yaakov Avinu worked for Lavan. It tells you how Yaakov did business with Lavan. And what does it tell you after that? It tells you this, uh, how Yaakov Avinu got married. Then it tells you how he had children, and he raised a family, and he had uh, almost all the shvatim in this week's parsha. And then, so on the surface, it seems that we're actually talking about day-to-day -day matters. It's telling you, Yaakov Avinu, he worked, he got a job, and he worked uh, to pay, and he got his wives, and he got married, and he had children. It seems that it's really just telling you, if you tried to, you could plug in a lot of different names into that. Somebody who, who worked, and, and got married, and had children, what is it telling us about Yaakov Avinu? On the surface, it looks like it's just day-to-day -day things. So with what we said, it's beautiful. It's not just telling us, it's telling us the whole point of Yaakov Avinu in his life, that everything he did, the Gashmias, it sounds like we have many, many times you have two different people that are doing the same thing, but one person takes all his Gashmias and raises the level of Kedusha, and one person just sits there, his Gashmias attack of Gashmias, he's left with a zero, he's left with nothing. Yaakov Avinu, through each thing that he did, Sai when he worked, and Sai when he got married, and Sai the challenges that he had with his wonderful employer, and then Sai the challenges that he had when, when, when the Shvatim were born, and, 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 and wives, and everything that Yaakov Avinu went through, each thing he used his Gashmias, and he raised it to a level of Kedusha, to a, a level of Kedusha which we almost can't comprehend. And where was all that from? Those from regular Gashmias thick of things that it seems to us. And this Madrega was only reached by Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, that's one of the reasons why Yaakov Avinu is called the Bechira of it. From the time of Ayetza Yaakov, when Yaakov left from Bereshava until he returned, every one of his Maisim was Kodesh Kedoshim. He took every Gashmi stick of thing that he did and he turned, he made it holy. He turned it into Dvarm Sheva Kedusha. And Yaakov Avinu reached, with, like, we, like we said a little before, Yaakov Avinu reached the level of Kadesh Atzmach of Amutar. He reached this high level that we all try to do. So the lesson, and what's the lesson in this week's parsha? A lesson that we could learn from here is that every Yid has the capability to take their regular things that they do day to day and raise the level of Kedusha in that. Yeah, besides the fact, you know, people do holy things in their life, and people do unbelievable things, and that, we're not even discussing that. We're talking about things which seem regular, things which seem like things you would do from day to day. If you look at the beginning of this week's parsha, it says, but Yaakov Avinu, when he, when he had his dream, when Yaakov Avinu 
was left, and everybody knows that the, the rocks, and they all got together, they wanted Yaakov Avinu there, but it says, Vihine Sulam Mutzav Artsa. There was a ladder standing on the ground. Zot in the Sea of Shalom. Sulam Mutzav Artsa means, now we're not talking about Hoichin Yonim over here. Sulam Mutzav Artsa, every person is a human being. Every person has his challenges. Every person has his has his uh, yetsara. Every person has his title, has his thing. Sulamuts of Arza. You have we're firmly planted on this earth. For sometimes we could feel that we're getting to high madrigas and we're living somewhere in the clouds and in the shemayim and and all the and all these uh, kabbalistic things. But the bottom line is we're here, and and our feet are planted on the ground. But what's the lesson? Sulamuts of Arza. But the roishoy magia hashemayim. You could take. All the gashmias that you you do, you can take the regular things that you do. You can raise the level of those things of, of things that you do regularly at So just remember, when it comes when, when when it came time for the mishkan and all those Hakadosh Baruch Hu wanted a dira, Hakadosh Baruch Hu wanted a, a, a dwelling place. He wanted a place of residence where on this world where we're human and where we make mistakes, and where we have our problems, and where we have our titles. But a Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted, he wanted a human being with all its faults and all their faults to take their level of, of Kedusha and raise it, and this is where a Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted to live. So now, when, when, uh, when, now when we face every day, and we come to every day, and we have all these Gashmias digger things in front of us, we have all these mundane things that we have to do, is another important phrase in this week's parsha. The Siva Shalom says, the end of that puzzle, the Zeh Shar Hashemayim. There's only one way to get Olam Haba. We're here. We can't try to get Olam Haba. We're not there. We can't. We're here. We're Sula of Arza. The Roshe Magia Hashemayim. So what happens after the Zeh Shar Hashemayim? The entire world is an opportunity for us. This is our stage. This is where we're performing. The Zeh Shara Shemayim, every part of Olam Hazeh over here is a Shara Shemayim. There's a way for us to get up and a way for us to reach real Ruchni. It's a way for us to really reach uh, Shara Shemayim, to reach the level of Kedusha that we're supposed to live. And really it's open to all of us. So if a person looks around, and look around yourself, look around, most people, I mean, the average person, most you look around, what, what differentiates one person from another? You see a person, ah, he's an unbelievable tzaddik, he's an unbelievable balmidas. He's doing the same things that everybody else is doing. He's waking up in the morning, and, and yes, he's learning, and he's eating breakfast, and he's taking his kids to school, and he's going. But when he takes his kids to school, how does he do it? Does he start waving his hands out the window and telling everybody to pull over and scoot and make a chil Hashem on the way there? He's, that's one way to do it. And there's another person who you look at him and you see, he's a Balmidas. He lets you pull out of your driveway. One step, right? He's a, he's a, he, the way he does things, how he does things, that's what differentiates one person from the other. And that's what's going to get a person to Elam Haba. Because really we're all, we have the same, everybody has the same ingredients out in front of us. We have the same ingredients and we're all human beings. We all have our faults and we all have our things that we have to do. But it's what you do with it. That's what Yaakov Avinu teaches us. Yaakov Avinu is teaching us that the struggle with Asa by our cave, he's telling us, no, forget about it. We're not even talking about a person who's ivory surim. You're ivory surim, you have your own separate set of problems. You're going to deal with God for that. But here we're talking about things that are mutter. How do you act with things that are mutter? How do you look to the other person on the street? How do you treat your family when you're in your house, when nobody's watching you? How do you treat your friends? How do you react to somebody? Do you speak Lush and Hara? Do you think, do things like, okay, Lush and Hara is a lot of surim, so we said we're not discussing so many, so many he saw him here but how does a person do that that's the struggle of Yaakov and Esau and that's what we can learn from this week's parsha. Kadesh Atzmachov and Mutter we want to be on Yaakov Avinu's side we know this is a battle that's going on now for some a couple, a couple of thousand years but which which side are you going to take who are you going to be a soldier for we hope that it's the Yaakov Avinu Good.